Hello and welcome to this month's Dev Talk, Aim and Optimize with SimulScan, the developer's approach. Today, we welcome Lindsay Fame and Sandeep Pandey from our SimulScan team to share with us about this tool. What exactly is SimulScan? It is a set of tools that Zebra provides in our mid and premium tier Android devices. And by integrating SimulScan into your application, you can automate almost any of your data capture processes. There are a few things that um, we should make sure that we highlight here, and we will cover them in more detail during this dev talk. Uh, number one, SimulScan is not an application. It is a set of tools that's built into the BSP of Select Zebra Android devices with the option to integrate, integrate into your application via Data Wedge or EMDK for Android, meaning you cannot download SimulScan. It is a part of the image, and post-release device support or SimulScan engine updates would require an image or lifeguard uh, patch. Uh, number two uh, to remember is that every organization is different, including their data capture needs. Uh, SimulScan offers many different processing types and it works by templates, an XML file that essentially dictates the rules and creates the logic for which SimulScan operates. Most customers um, and their workflows will require a custom template to be loaded on their SimulScan supported devices. Speaking of devices, um, it is also important to note that SimulScan is a tool that we offer, again, on our mid and premium Android devices. It is not supported on every device and not all configurations. Um, so we'll, we will cover this in more detail in a little bit. Um, last but not least, while many features are free, there are a number of advanced features um, that we have recently developed that do require um, a license and a minimum SimulScan engine version, um, which may or may not be supported on some of our older devices. So let's start with the different processing types to understand how to create your template. Um, essentially, SimulScan can be broken down into three main categories. We have our barcode processing solutions, whether it's a single barcode or multiple multi-barcode solution. We have single processing types, meaning you can only support one of these at a time in your template, um, such as freeform OCR or reading the MRZ zone of your passports um, or capturing an image with your, your imager or camera based on a barcode. We also have um, some document processing solutions for structured documents to extract printed text, identify if checkboxes have been uh, checked, we can capture images, decode barcodes, and even detect if a signature is present in a defined region. So let's start with barcode processing types. Whether you are capturing only one barcode or multiple barcodes, um, SimulScan can help optimize your workflow as your workers no longer need to focus on which barcode to capture or use their hands to block surrounding barcodes. And because of this, your application does not need to do checking and reject uh, wrong barcodes, therefore reducing scan time and worker training. So essentially with SimulScan, you create the rules and once they are met, SimulScan returns it back. We offer many different barcode features. You can learn more about each one in depth on developers portal, but we'll cover a few of the basics here. So you can create a template to capture one or many specific barcodes, such as part numbers that always begin with P or 1P um, and quantity that always begins with Q. This means that SimulScan will always look for these fields, and once it finds them, we'll return it back. Or you can create a template to capture a group of common barcodes, like serial numbers. If it is always the same quantity in a pack or a box, use the fixed quantity feature for free, up to 10 fields, um, to capture a defined group. Now, uh, we've introduced a few new solutions. Um, as we listen to our customers' needs, we realize that we needed to provide some solutions that were a little bit more adaptable. So we introduced uh, Dynamic Quantity, a solution that could handle scenarios where you need to capture a group of common barcodes, like serial numbers that always begin with S or 1S. Um, however, we needed to be able to handle scenarios in which the quantity was not always the same. Consider electronics, where serial numbers are tracked throughout the entire supply chain. Usually when shipped in bulk, these serial numbers are presented on an outer label or shipping manifest with a quantity barcode. Using SimulScan's dynamic, dynamic quantity solution, we can dynamically change the quantity rule in the template on the fly. In this de demonstration, we're using a quantity barcode to dictate this rule. Note that coming soon, we will be able to support um, something we're calling user 
or system input it, meaning a worker or your end system can actually provide the quantity uh, prior to each session. And you can see here that we support actually up to 99 barcodes in this solution today, which have saved customers over 80% of their labor in these kind of use cases. So next is variable quantity. We heard from our customers that there was a need to capture a changing number of barcodes in scenarios where there was no rule for a quantity. Consider automotive labels where specific barcodes may or may not be present at all times. So we created variable quantity to capture a varying number of barcodes. And in this demo, we have set the template to capture between one and 20 barcodes with no rules for barcode checking. Essentially, the way that this solution works is based on a timeout. The engine is always in a state of capture. And once it does not see a new barcode, for a de defined amount of time, which is configurable based on your use case, the decoder is, decoded data is then sent. So um, we do have a few more advanced barcode solutions that we are working on with releases this year. So make sure you do keep checking in on developers portal to see what's new. Um, as we move off of barcode processing into single processing field types, um, Simulscan offers the ability to capture uh, images, whether it's with your camera or your imager, whole documents um, or a specific area of a document. Um, as we said before, we also have the ability to capture um, MRZ zones of passports. So this is written in OCRA or OCRB, which is actually considered a symbology. Um, and if you use our pre-installed uh, travel document uh, template, you can actually capture any passport or visa um, very quickly with the imager um, as well as camera. And we have logic built in to, to ensure that um, the correct data is captured. You can also use a premium feature of freeform OCR um, to capture single or multi-line printed text, whether it's an asset tag or a printed address to automate um, what was once a manual entry. So next is structured document field types. Um, it's important to understand what a structure, structured document is. Um, they are documents that follow a template design, meaning that the data, such as a mailing address, may change, but the location of the data or the address does not change and is always located in the, the same location relative to the document's border or anchor barcode. With this, we support OCR, um, OMR, um, so that's printed text, uh, checkboxes, oval circles, uh, barcodes, images, as well as being able to detect the presence of a signature. All right, so now that we've understood uh, a lot of the different processing types that Simoscan um, can offer, we need to learn how to build a template. Um, it's pretty easy with our free cloud-based template builder. The first step is making sure that you have uh, clean samples and images of your documents and labels. Um, and you've identified which processing types or data fields are needed in your workflow and application screen. So simply log in to Template Builder website with your core ID and partner login. Um, this is simoscan.cper.com. Um, you're gonna select the type of template you wanna create, um, upload samples, and then identify uh, the fields or um, data that you wanna collect. You can change some template settings. Now, since there are so many different um, solutions that Simulscan uh, can, can offer, uh, we've created some short video tutorials online to match most of the processing features that we reviewed earlier. So you can reference this as you wanna build your own template. So make sure you visit Developers Portal um, for, for these tutorials. Now that we've covered the different processing types and templates, we need to understand what uh, devices, or sorry, excuse me, which features or processing uh, types require license, and if there are any Simulscan engine dependencies. Essentially, it's really easy to break down licensing into two rules. Um, anything where the quantity is above 10 or the quantity changes requires a Simulscan multi-barcoding premium license. So that's that uh, middle column here, and that's the SKU. Anything that requires OCR, OMR, um, will require the Simulscan uh, Prem SKU. Uh, note that with this SKU, you do get um, all of the multi-barcoding features as well. For the engine dependencies, anything that requires the Prem license, uh, whether it's the multi-barcoding one 
uh, excuse me, anything that requires the multi-barcoding premium license um, does require engine 1.14X or greater. Um, so you can see here. Um, and as we release new features, you can visit developers portal again to understand what if there are any license dependencies. Uh, to check your engine, you simply just open up the pre-installed SimulScan demo app, scroll to the about section, um, and then you can read which version you have here. Our newer products will also indicate which input sources are supported. Um, you will need to deploy a license to each device to unlock the data for our premium processing features. For developers, you can follow the instructions here, which are also uh, posted on developers portal and tech docs. Note that we also do support enterprise licensing. Um, so you can watch this video online as well um, and, and check out the, the steps online. If you do want a demo license, uh, feel free to uh, request one. This link is also posted on developers portal on the, the uh, licensing tab. Um, and we'll be sharing this presentation. So these hyperlinks are all for you guys uh, to use. So here is a quick breakdown of our current supported devices. Um, note, we don't support laser scan scanners. Uh, fun fundamentally, a laser scanner really can only um, see a barcode in one dimension. And our imager scanners are 2D, which allow us to capture multiple barcodes in a single frame. Um, so we do not support laser scanners. Some exciting news is that we will be supporting uh, ERI and TC-8000, um, as well as actually MC-33 um, uh, shortly. Uh, it's important to note, however, that the support is for standard range use cases, meaning we will not be supporting um, multiple barcodes from far distances. So now that we've covered the different processing types, uh, how to create a template, licensing and engines. I'm going to hand this over to Sandeep uh, to discuss how to integrate SimulScan into your application. So let me just hand this over. All right, Sandeep, passing control over to you. We can see your screen, but it's just your desktop, no slides right now. Okay. There we are, now we see the slides. Okay, thanks, thanks, Larry. Uh, Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, thanks for that uh, detailed explanation of what SamuelScan is and a beautiful introduction of SamuelScan and more details about template builder stuff. So now uh, you guys uh, must be like more curious about how all these stuff work together. So here you are. So uh, you just create a XML template, uh, which Lindsay already described how you can create, uh, which matches your workflow. And then uh, download or place a copy of your template to a specified location or on the directory on the device. So I'll be letting you know like to which uh, directory location you need to copy your templates. Then uh, select an appropriate template uh, from your application's interface. And then call a start scan from your application. So this calls into the appropriate system service. And then uh, the system service calls into the appropriate scanning interface. That would be either a camera or imager, uh, which uh, processes the input barcode as per the template defined workflow and returns back the process data to the application. So now I will be transitioning over to like how you can deploy a template. So, after you have like uh, created a template, you have several ways of deploying a template onto your device. You can deploy a template remotely using Template Builder Server, or you can, or once you are done creating a template, you can directly go to Edit and then do a Release Template, and you should be able to see a confirmation dialog saying "Template deployed to a release directory." Now you can go to your device, open your SimulScan demo app, 
and then select uh, the start menu there go to templates and then select from server menu and now you would be asked to enter your core id or partner id and password and then after a successful login you should be able to sync all your templates on the template builder cloud to your local device so uh, you can also opt for deploying your templates manually onto your device by downloading it from the template builder cloud to your local machine and then either copy the same to the data edge default directory location or a simul scan default template location by using adb commands so i'll be giving those commands in my later slides so uh, you can also integrate uh, the template with your application by using it uh, bundled within your app's asset folder and then manually copying the same to the data wedge or the simul scan default location as well so the default template directory of simul scan and data wedge so if you can see it's already given in the slide and i uh, just uh, like to make a note on this uh, it's like all the features uh, which will require license all the uh, it's means all the premium features will still be requiring the license for uh, to be used and uh, you can also like follow the tech doc links here uh, in order to learn more about uh, the documentation on the same so now I'll be transitioning over to what integration options you have for SAML scan. So uh, you can, uh, it means you basically have like two basic options out here to be uh, able to integrate your app with SAML scan. So you can either use uh, Data Wedge or the EMDK path. So if you're using Data Wedge, you just need to select an input option, one output option, and then create a data wedge profile and configure it to a template that suits your workflow. Then associate your profile to the package ID or the app activity of your application. And that's it. So these are the like uh, an overview of what steps you need to follow. I'll be covering uh, these steps in detail in my later slides. Now, if uh, we are using EMDK option, then uh, you should have your template copied at the simul scan templates directory, or even you can include it with your app and copy the same when loading the app on the device. Now you need to implement the EMDK defined interfaces and pass your template configurations using the EMDK defined APIs. And now you're ready to scan your barcode. So uh, even for this, this is a very, oh, quick overview of what steps you need to follow, but I'll be covering those steps in detail in my later slides. So, and in order to learn more about like EMDK APIs, you can follow the tech talk links. So now, uh, how you can integrate your SAML scan app with Data Wedge. So uh, let me, uh, before that, give you a brief introduction of what Data Wedge is. So uh, Data Wedge app serves as an interface for barcode scanning and processing solutions for Zebra and Android devices. So Data Wedge profiles are basically the building block of Data Wedge application, which comes pre-installed on Zebra devices. Each app that uses Data Wedge must be associated with a profile and each profile configures data input, data formatting, and data output settings for a scan session. So, Data work, uh, Data Wedge works on intent-based APIs that can be used by Android apps to perform events related to a scan session. So, and we also have a Data Wedge uh, demo app, uh, which works uh, with a, a Data Wedge intents and it comes pre-installed out of the box. So you guys can like uh, try editing a profile there and uh, try it out and have a real-time feel of how this data wedge uh, profile will work on an app. So, and uh, just a uh, exception there, uh, you won't be able to edit the profile zero because it is uh, used for the systems uh, uh, system services. So you can like feel free to create any other profile or edit any other profile. So now let's move on to how you can create a data wedge solution for SAML scan step-by-step -step approach. So first uh, you need to 
push your template to the data wedge templates directory using the adb adb command already there in the slide now uh, create a new profile or try modifying an, an existing one and then associate your application package or activity to the profile using the associate application settings and then enable simul scan input so enabling simul scan input will basically enable your profile to be used with simul scan as you can see here on the screen so in order to enable your simul scan input you just check on this box and then uh, configure your template selection setting to select a template you just pushed so uh, you can select uh, here whatever template you want to use with your profile and then uh, configure scan data output selection to an output mechanism of your choice so the output mechanism if you want your data to be outputted uh, using an intent or a keyboard uh, action or uh, ip so you can use these mechanisms uh, to configure your profile so now I'll uh, go in detail like uh, how can you configure uh, your data wedge profile uh, with uh, whatever output mechanisms you want. So uh, this is for like data wedge intent output. So how you can set up your data wedge profile to have a uh, scanned out barcode scanned output as an intent. So uh, basically uh, what you can do is like you can uh, check the enabled feature in the intent output setting here and then specify action category and intent delivery options so uh, you can provide like uh, uh, your profile to be like starting an activity or a start activity or if, if you uh, set it to start service so this uh, profile will basically return you uh, the data a scan data on a, on a start service intent if you want it to be a broadcast intent you can specify uh, this option and uh, a key in your uh, broadcast intent string uh, which you'll be handling in your application to be notified when your data is scanned and be delivered to you so uh, this is all about intent output so the next would be uh, data wedge input uh, data wedge ip option uh, that is you can if you like uh, require your data to be uh, uh, outputted on a ip so you can use this option so here uh, like uh, you can configure your profile uh, to a particular uh, protocol that is using you you want to use tcp or udp and then uh, you can specify the ip and port address uh, to which your data will be delivered and then you need to configure uh, your ip wedge application on the machine on which you want to receive the data so uh, basically this ip and the port should be of that machine on which your ip wedge will be installed and then uh, uh, means you, you are all set and whenever like your uh, profile returns any data you will be able to receive it on that ip wedge machine so uh, you can follow the uh, setup ip wedge uh, link uh, in order to like have a more uh, details on how you can set up IP wedge on your uh, laptop or a computer. So now uh, let's transition over to uh, data wedge keystroke output. So uh, this is uh, useful when you want to scan any barcode and have it pasted on any edit text box without any extra steps. So uh, you can uh, basically also inject action key characters at the end of every decode session and you can also configure the delay between the key events of a multi-byte character or even like uh, between key events delay uh, like you can uh, as you can see here for an example you can uh, if you want to insert a tab or a line feed or a carriage return at, as an action character at the end of uh, any decode session you can uh, you configure this your profile uh, with the proper settings like action key character and inter character delay uh, configurations. So now I'm uh, just giving you a more insight on what are region separators and what are action keys because uh, these are like uh, terms which uh, the uh, the end user really gets confused. So let's not get confused. Uh, so 
what's region separators and action keys so region separators are basically a separator or a delimiter which you can use between your barcodes within a single uh, scan session an action key character is uh, basically uh, some uh, action key characters which we want to append to indicate that your barcode session has ended so if you can see here uh, how we have uh, showed the region separators in green and the action uh, key character in purple so uh, this is what the basic difference between a region separator and action keys and you can basically use it in a very uh, handy manner whenever you uh, process barcodes uh, uh, to which suits your workflow and as per your business logic so now uh, i'll be transitioning over to like how you can use certain handy intents which is already available in the data wedge api so you know to uh, have a meaningful uh, application or solution for you so uh, basically we have uh, like few intent apis uh, which i have like picked up uh, for detailed uh, learning you can go you can follow these links of the intent APIs and you can learn about a whole lot of intent APIs what we support on DataWedge. But here I have just picked a few uh, handy ones which we'll be using daily. So switch to a profile. So uh, what you can do using this intent is like you can switch between your profiles using uh, using this. And uh, th the basic use case would be uh, you can uh, have like two profiles created and you can even export a profile. And then once your profile is exported, you can attach it to your app. So suppose you have like two different template workflows and you want to use them side by side, you can create a profile and then uh, you can attach your template to that profile and then export the profile and uh, then integrate it with your application. And then once you start using whatever profile, you just copy the profile to the default location, which I already mentioned earlier, and then you can trigger a scan. So this intent will help you in basically switching between your profiles. Then you have a soft scan trigger. So uh, what this intent does is like you can uh, trigger a scanning session uh, using this. Uh, and uh, this will require like whatever the uh, default profile is enabled it will be uh, triggering a scan session using that profile so you can use this in really handy manner like uh, you can uh, reprogram your trigger or even you can program any uh, soft button to trigger a scan session or to stop a scan session then uh, we have a few other intents like set config so using this intent you can basically uh, set the configurations of your profile or you can edit any configurations of your profile but uh, this is only right now supported for uh, barcode scanning and not for sama scan so uh, this is something which we have in the roadmap uh, in the like near future releases so we'll be supporting this as well for sama scan so the next intent would be a switching a scanner uh, so if you want to like uh, some use cases where you switch between like your scanners like a camera or an imager so you can use this intent uh, in order to configure your profile to be uh, using that particular hardware to scan your barcode so uh, this is also really a uh, handy intent but uh, this is unfortunately we have not yet uh, support for simul scan and uh, we also will be supporting it in the future releases uh, which is there in the roadmap so the next is how you can integrate all touch uh, te uh, that's the velocity application with your data wedge so uh, for this also like uh, you need to make sure some of the prerequisites are met uh, like uh, you need to make sure your velocity version is 1.2.111 or higher on your device you need to install a simul scan velocity bridge so the link to that APK is already here. So you can also like download some scripts there uh, following that link and that will help you basically develop a application for using the velocity bridge. And then uh, once your, uh, your device is 
all means uh, you're ready with your pre-installed uh, requirements you can now configure your data wedge profile to use with velocity so what you need to do is like create a data wedge profile and name it like say in my case i just uh, use the name samoscan you can use any user-friendly name and then uh, choose uh, any application the velocity application which you are developing uh, to associate uh, with that particular profile and then you you need to basically uh, enable simulscan as an input plugin and then uh, just below that menu you will be shown like which template uh, workflow you would be requiring to uh, scan your barcode so you select your template and then uh, you're done so uh, once you're done with all these things you also need to configure uh, your output mechanism so uh, velocity uh, basically works on like keystroke output so you need to configure keystroke output settings like you need to specify a region separator which i already discussed to a tab and then you set up your keystroke output uh, to add an action key at the end uh, which is here like an enter and that will uh, specify the velocity app that it's the end of the data and then it will uh, basically take that input character enter and then it will display you know, your data uh, as, as a delimiter that that data has as session has ended here so this is how you can use TerraVedge with all touch te so now let's transition to our next option that is emdk for android so let me introduce like uh, given give you an overview of what an emdk uh, for android is so emdk is basically an api bundle which can be integrated with android sdk and android studio to develop application solution for scanning on zebra android devices so uh, you can uh, basically follow these links to basically download the emdk apis and you can integrate uh, with your uh, setup and uh, here are the detailed steps of how you can download and set up it for your android studio to develop emdk applications so now uh, let's come to how we can create a application using emdk in six simple steps so you just uh, uh, need to basically enable the android permissions uh, for uh, which would be required for your application and then implement a few listeners from the emdk apis and then you initialize your emdk uh, results object and then you get a simul scan manager and a simul scan reader object and then you need to set the required template uh, which will define your workflow and the simul scan configurations for the same and then you just read and publish your process data so i'll be going through each and every step uh, one step by step so the first step enable android permissions so here you can see uh, like uh, for in order to use your application your android application with emdk uh, you first need to have these permissions <coughs> inside your app excuse me so it would be uh, like you require the right external uh, storage in order to access the templates from the sd card uh, which you will be storing then uh, you need to use the permission uses library com.symbol.mdk emdk because uh, once you install this app uh, your app should specify that uh, it, it it is able to use this particular library which is there in the bsp framework and then uh, we prefer a recommended a recommendation like uh, you should always uh, make your application work in a portrait mode in order to align with our viewfinder for the simul scan uh this is a recommendation uh which will like uh, not give any uh deviation from the regular uh implementation so yeah so once you're all set with the permissions uh we can go to the next step which says implement listeners so uh we have uh, we have already like interfaces 
uh, which are defined in the EMDK called the EMDK listener, data listeners, and the status listeners. So uh, once you implement uh, these listeners, so this will uh, give you uh, these callback mechanisms on which uh, you will be, uh, you can basically weave into your application and uh, create a working solution for you. So, uh, uh, well, EMDK listeners uh, have these callbacks on open and on closed. So, uh, this will uh, be basically be used to uh, initialize your scanner. You need, you can initialize a scanner here, and then uh, you on close you need to basically release or uh, release an EMDK object or release any resources you are holding. And then uh, data listener will give you a callback of on data where you will be receiving your scan data. And then status listener uh, will be uh, giving you the status up, uh, update of your scan session going on, whether it was completed successfully or it failed, uh, all those of such stuff. So now let's move to step three. So uh, you first initialize your EMDK results object on the on create of your activity. Then uh, you get your SAML scan manager and SAML scan reader object in the on open callback. And then you initialize your supported scanning interface for uh, scanning. Uh, so you will basically initialize your SAML scan reader object, whether to use a imager or a camera or the default, which has been set already in your template. So now what you require to do is like set the template from the SD card uh, SAML scan templates uh, directory. So you basically uh, pri provide a browsing mechanism and uh, uh, you select the particular template you want to use for your workflow. And then you can uh, choose to like set the configurations uh, uh, if it's not been. So by default, we have this configuration set, but uh, you, you need, if you want, you can uh, choose the configuration settings. Like if you want auto capture as on or audio feedback or LED feedback or user confirmation on scan. So. Uh, you can basically uh, choose to set those configurations and then you set your configuration to the reader. So you have a reader's object. Now you have a template object and you set the configurations and then you uh, set your reader to be used with that configuration. Now uh, you call into the SAML scan reader dot read uh, method and uh, that will basically trigger your read mechanism uh, using the particular template you have set and using the particular uh, interface that is the camera uh, or image or the default. So now the next step would be you'll how you will read. So now uh, when you uh, call the read uh, callback, so what it did is basically we, we already, uh, it will return you data on the on data callback. So here, uh, once you receive this on data callback, you will be receiving a Simon scan data object here. So you can uh, basically read that object and uh, you can display it in a choice of a view. It, it might be a list view, it may be a recycler view. You can play around with that. You, are, you can feel free that there. Then once you're done scanning, so you can implement this on closed uh, callback mechanism. So to in order to release uh, any EMDK manager objects what you have held on or any other resources related to scanning you, you are uh, holding on. So after this, this completes uh, your uh, scanning cycle and uh, at the end you will be getting a scan data. So uh, here like uh, this is a slide I have just uh, kept in for like more techies and developers who would be really interested like what's there in the data. So let me connect the dots there. So uh, when once you receive the on data callback, so you'll be having the SAML scan data with you. And in the SAML scan uh, data, uh, suppose uh, here I've taken an example of say a group of barcode with uh, specified regions inside it and some fields outside it. So here uh, you can see in the highlighter one, like uh, this is uh, one SAML scan group 
and it has like two regions defined inside. And then there are two different fields, which is also outside this group. And it, uh, this is field one and field two. And uh, these are the data inside it. So this is like to give you a highlight of uh, how a data, uh, how a scan data will be looking uh, once you see into the data structure of the same. Now, uh, let me also give you an overview of how a template is getting defined into a SIMO scan data structure so that you might be able to correlate everything what we have been doing so far. So this is an example of the same data structure. So the template XML which we create has something like this kind of structure tree. So tag, tag tree, I would say. So here you have like a sample group and inside you have like two regions defined. And then we have like two more regions which is outside this group. So uh, th these colors like correspond uh, to the uh, color coding what we have used on both sides. So this region is maps down to this data. This region maps down to the red one and the orange one region maps to the orange one. So now we have uh, enough knowledge of like both the technologies, the EMDK and the data wedge. So now we are, I think, educated enough uh, so we can decide on like uh, which one we should, uh, would be more suitable for our business case, right? So uh, here is like a comparison of one and one between like data wedge and EMDK for Android. And uh, so uh, just, we have, uh, just wanted to point out a few things here. So uh, there are some limitations on data wedge. Uh, it's like data wedge doesn't support the name of the barcodes uh the barcode field so once you scan you'll just receive a stream of data and the data the field names won't be there whereas emdk supports that so if you use emdk you'll also be getting like the field name uh, along with the barcode scan and also like uh, we have a new feature uh, which is coming in in our roadmaps uh, with the recent releases that is the user input quantity which I guess uh, Lindsay already talked about. So that is not supported yet with the EMDK. Uh, we are already working on, on that feature and it would be soon available on the uh, future releases. And uh, so uh, we can say that like EM, uh, data which if you really want to uh, use less coding and uh, means uh, if you don't uh, have like really complex use case, you can use uh, data wedge freely. And if you really have like uh, uh, your, your use case, which really uh, needs more control and uh, you need like, uh, you can say more sophisticated apps uh, and you need to like control in every steps, uh, you can use EMDK for Android in that case. So now uh, I'll be going through like some new features, uh, uh, which uh, what it means to our SAML scan app. So uh, in our uh, feature, like new feature roadmap, we have like user input quantity, where you, your application can adjust barcode quantity without modifying the templates. Then we have the feature called a variable quantity and dynamic quantity, uh, where like the number of regions within the SAML scan data will vary based on the label scan. I think Lindsay already uh, covered these stuff. And then uh, we'll be also supporting like enhanced uh, user feedbacks. Like if you are able to see right now, the screen looks like this, but you should be uh, waiting on. So our next releases will be uh, uh, giving you more enhanced feedbacks. Like uh, we, we are trying to display uh, the numbers uh, of barcodes you have scanned currently. And uh, there are more uh, cool stuffs which uh, which are coming with the future release of Simoscan. So with that note, uh, you can also like refer to these detailed tech talks. Uh, so if you want uh, to go, uh, to go, you can try the developer portal for any questions, or uh, you can if you have any uh, learn more about template builder, you can go to feel free and follow the link. And uh, we have like uh, tech docs for EMDK and data wedge. So we have a full detailed explanation of like data wedge intents and uh, EMDK APIs. And also we have, we do have a sample app there uh, which you can just download and try it out. 
uh, and and try your modification with that. So uh, that's it. I think. Thanks. Thank you all. Sandeep, and, that was great. Uh, if Thank you guys you. have any queries. Yeah. So um, we actually do have a few questions here, Sandeep. So if uh, you can get mm -hmm. you and Lindsay ready here. So the, the first one that came in was about uh, using the camera. Um, and this user was having some trouble getting the camera started up that sometimes it would take up to three attempts and and just wanted to see if you had any feedback around that you know why starting the camera and the best way to do that so uh in that case i would suggest like uh i, I would just i wanted to have a look like uh what uh basically uh, what version of uh, image kit and what version of thermal scan uh, he's using and uh, we'll have to look into like more details like how he's trying to start the camera uh, or is there like any other things he's doing in the background or something so uh, it, this is like more of a, i would say a technical insight would be required for this okay. so if you can basically post his question in more detailed some logs or something on a developer uh, site uh, developers portal then we'll, we'll definitely be like uh, look into that problem and uh, we can try to answer them. okay and then for OCR what type of source do you recommend for that uh, I didn't get this properly so what type of source as in yeah so when you have um, OCR you're trying to capture that how do you kind of mm -hmm. get that source that you're you're trying to capture? Where where often do those come from, and how do you develop that? So for OCR related uh, stuff, I I think like uh, we have some forms uh, predefined, and uh, you can like uh, on the template builder side you can uh, like check on like OCR you want to do an OCR and then you can create a template there and then download and and try to use that template with your application okay this is what something he mm -hmm. was asking or yep that's great okay. um, we did have a question mm -hmm. here um, that Lindsay was able to answer but I think others might have a similar question around template builder and whether that's available on premise and uh, the response there is that no, it is a cloud-based solution. You can see it at simulscan.zebra.com. Um, yeah, that's correct. Let's see. So we we also had a question here about being able to print uh, through um, AllTouch TE. So that's something I think we can follow up with that one offline as well it's more of a specific type of question are there any other kind of overall questions on simulscan and how how to get the most out of it and any of the specific uh, methods that sandeep or lindsay reviewed all right i think that's all for now i do want to remind everyone we will be posting uh, the slides that uh, they went through on the developer portal uh, we have a, a specific post for this dev talk uh, under the events section. So I'll have that uh, presentation up probably in the next hour or two. We'll also be taking the recording of this and putting it on the Zebra YouTube channel. Um, that will probably take about a week before we're able to get that up. So I want to thank uh, Sandeep again. This was a great overview and it's really such a powerful tool. I'm excited that we have this for our customers and partners. And Thanks, we will... Dan. Um, I also, I mm -hmm. also wanted to, to let everyone know if you guys have use cases where you, you don't know if Simulscan can provide a solution, definitely to reach out to us um, or request some demo licenses uh, so we can see what we can, can do. A lot of times, um, we don't necessarily post solutions because there's no UI way of, of putting it on template builder for others to copy. Um, but it, Simulscan is built on something called FlexiScript, meaning it's flexible. Um, so definitely reach out to us so we can, can see if we can uh, help optimize any workflows. And Lindsay, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Is that through the developer portal to post things in the discussions there or another method? Um, I think it, it would be great. Uh, 
that way if you guys have a use case that someone else does um, share similar then people can can also uh, chime in there um, you can request a demo license by doing so uh, your contact will be shared so we can also follow up with you um, that way as well excellent all right anything else Sandeep or Lindsay that you'd like to add I think that's it for today all right. Well, thanks again. I think this was a really helpful overview. We look forward to talking to everyone next month. Awesome.